So I'm walking down the street and this random young woman gets grabbed and forcefully turned around. Then I realize it's my mom has turned this woman. So she's facing this huge billboard with a train coming through the tunnel and a gorgeous sunset shining through the tunnel. My mom says, see that ad? My son did that. Is that not beautiful or what? I thought I was going to die of embarrassment. Mom, I said, please leave this poor woman alone. But something strange happened. Instead of being angry, I could see the look of amazement on her face as she turns to me and whispers, wow, you did that? I tried to control it, but emotion overtook me as I responded, yeah. My work was finally so visually amazing that even total strangers like this woman were impressed. Wow. But then a few days later, something happened that changed everything. I had the opportunity to win the anti-drug campaign in America with powerful, logical reasons why you should not do drugs. Then I saw the ad that won and it terrified me. It's a guy holding an egg saying, this is your brain. Crack the shell and drop the egg into a sizzling frying pan. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? When I saw the ad, I was overwhelmed. I'm supposed to be this advertising whiz kid having worked with the largest companies in the world. But this, this was something I'd never experienced before. This was emotional selling, not logic like I was used to, but emotional selling, profoundly more powerful than anything I'd ever known how to do. And it terrified me. How can I be in advertising and marketing in life and not know how to do emotional selling? After about a week of sleepless nights, a scientist in me emerged and started wondering, could emotional selling be something I learn? It's definitely not something they teach in school. As I held a three by five card where I wrote the words, your brain on drugs, so I'd remember the ad, I suddenly realized I could use this. What if I create a passion box where every time I see an ad or hear something that's emotionally powerful, instead of just trying to overanalyze it, what if I drop it in the box in the hopes that eventually all these examples will help me understand how to create emotional selling for myself and for my students. After more than 10 years of putting incredible ads and quotes inside the box, so it was almost overflowing, out of the blue, something struck me like a bolt of lightning. I was at a conference, and John Gray was telling me about this incredible book he wrote, Men, Women, and Relationships, that sadly only sold a few thousand copies. Then he got this crazy idea. What if I changed the title to Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? and tweak the content a little so it's consistent with the title. Guess what happened? Almost overnight, half a million copies suddenly got sold. Then a million, then two million, then five million. Eventually, 50 million copies got sold. 50 million, all because he simply changed the title? Wow. As I wrote Men Are From Mars on a 3x5 card, I suddenly realized John Gray used the metaphor. Men aren't really from a different planet. Well, I think some of you might think we are, but <laughs> it's a whole other story. But, but wow, could metaphors be the secret to emotional selling, or at least one of the secrets? When I got home, I dumped the passion box on my bed and quickly discovered that metaphors is one of 14 brain triggers at the heart of emotional selling. I thought my brain was going to explode. I suddenly realized when you include a brain trigger in what you say or post, it seems to trigger the emotion centers of a person's brain, where decisions hang out, causing your listener to be much more receptive to what you're saying. I also realized this is your brain on drugs is also a metaphor. They're probably sitting around a table thinking, when someone takes drugs, what happens? It fries their brain. Huh, what else gets fried? Eggs. Why don't we drop an egg into a sizzling frying pan and say, this is your sizzling brain on drugs. Harvard professor Gerald Zaltman and Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman both showed how more than 90% of buying decisions are emotionally triggered. Logic could be a part, but it, for most of us, it's the emotion centers of the brain that need to be activated to get the results you want from your audience or your listener. In neuroscience, Hebb's law tells us about the brain's neurons. Neurons that fire together, wire together. 
So whenever you're trying to sell an idea or product, if you can trigger different parts of your listener's brain at the same time, it becomes much easier to get them to say yes to your ideas and to buy your products. So let's take a look at how metaphors work. Your brain hears the words, but also has to figure out what those words really mean. Are men really from a different planet? Is the TV show Shark Tank really about a tank full of sharks? How about Rocky Road ice cream? Rocky Road catapulted Dreyer's ice cream to massive wealth with the power of a metaphor. And think about it, when you get Rocky Road ice cream and open it up, it doesn't have rocks inside it. Rocky Road is chocolate ice cream with nuts and marshmallows. But it's bumpy like a Rocky Road. Rocky Road also uses alliteration, the repetition of sound, Rocky Road. And I suddenly realized how many blockbuster products and powerful phrases use alliteration. I never realized this before. Coca-Cola, Best Buy, PayPal, TikTok, how about I'm a baby boomer or trick or treat? Is it a coincidence that so many blockbuster products and powerful phrases use alliteration? Could alliteration be another brain trigger? Absolutely. How about rhyme? Jack and Jill went up the... I bet all of you know how that phrase ends. Because like most nursery rhymes, even if the last time we heard it was 10, 20, maybe 50 years ago or more, we tend to remember it like it was yesterday because rhyme sticks to the brain like glue. I call all these tools brain glue because they make our ideas sticky so they stick to the brain like glue, making it easier to remember and easier to get people to say yes to our ideas and to buy, and to buy our products. By the way, rhyme also works in a courtroom. Attorney Johnny Cochran got celebrity O.J. Simpson freed from an almost certain guilty verdict in a murder trial with the help of a rhyming phrase. If the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit. Combined with OJ helping that along by exaggerating how the murderer's glove didn't fit him. I remember after the trial, two of the jurors were asked, with all that evidence against OJ, why'd you let him go free? Their response, we knew if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. The glove didn't fit, so we had to acquit. OJ's trial shows that brain glue doesn't just sell products, although it's really good at selling products. Brain glue boosts our ability to persuade on so many levels that we even have the power to get someone freed from an almost certain guilty verdict in a murder trial. That's the power of emotional selling. So then this mom comes up to me and says, you're an expert in brain glue. Can you help me with my 14-year-old son? Uh, okay. She says, well, no, he's asking me, Mommy, why do we have to follow so many rules in life? Okay, so we came up with a rhyme and a metaphor. First, what rhymes with rules? How about fools? Only fools don't follow rules. Okay, that could probably work. But let's add a metaphor to make it even stronger. So I brainstormed with the mom and then sat with her and her son and said, so you were asking your mom why we have to follow so many rules in life, right? And he said, yeah. I said, well, think about it. When you're thirsty, you could always drink out of the toilet, but why would you want to? Remember, only fools don't follow rules. His response, hmm, that makes sense. First, getting a 14-year-old to say that anything makes sense is a miracle. But does it really make sense, or did I simply trigger the emotion centers of his brain so it felt like it makes sense? Just like the political phrase, you can't hug a child with nuclear arms, or the comedian's line, the right to bear arms is almost as crazy as the right to arm bears. From a logical standpoint, both these phrases are absolutely ridiculous, and yet they resonate with many people because they trigger the emotion centers of the brain. I'm telling you, when you start to understand the power of emotional selling, it'll change the way you sell your ideas and products forever. So of the 14 brain triggers that I uncovered, I got to share three of them with you here today. Metaphors, alliteration, and rhyme. And that's enough to get you started so you begin to understand the power of emotional selling. But let's get all of you to recognize a way that you can actually apply brain glue for yourself, okay? Take a moment and think of an idea or product that's really important to you. I'll give you a moment. What's an idea or product that's really important to you? Okay? <laughs> okay? Now, next, 
I invite you to come up with an analogy or metaphor by completing the phrase, my idea or product is just like blank. What's it like? Fill in the blank. Okay? I give you 24 hours to do this. In the next 24 hours, do this. Okay? I bet you'll start to understand the power of emotional selling beyond what you ever expected. So, want to sell a lot more products than you've ever sold before? Want to make your ideas much easier to get people to say yes to? If you do, then here's the secret. Are you ready? Okay. To light the fire of desire in your buyer. This is flames coming out of my hair. Okay, my hair's on fire. To light the fire of desire in your buyer. Whenever you're trying to sell an idea or product, if you can trigger different parts of your listener's brain, what you get is a way to make your ideas so sticky that they stick to their brain like glue.